Welcome to the new setting. We have uh, a lot more opportunities to set up remote location shots and to do set studio kind of setups in order to maybe present more information and give a better perspective on what God is doing. Not only in my life, but in the lives of those people that I touch or that somehow God uses me in order to relate to them what they're doing and they share with me and then I pass it on to you. You see, that's kind of what it's all about. Is It's not so much about one person like me or you, but it's about us as we distribute and share the good news that God has given us. As we relate our personal experiences with God as we tell one another the good things that God has done. Now, when you don't relate the good things, it's usually gossip and slander and bad mouthing and kind of tearing things down that really isn't very positive. Because the scripture teaches that we're supposed to encourage one another, to exhort one another even more so as we see that the in the world or maybe the end of our life has come about and so that's what we want to do when we have devotions we want to be focused in on that which is profitable to us that helps us in our life that makes those things easier in our day rather than tearing down things that are passing away anyway so why bother I know lots of times I read a lot of things and I wonder uh, why did you even bother saying it? It's kind of like it's all going to pass away anyways. Who cares? Is it more of a self-gratification to tear something down? Or is it better to recognize that except for the grace of God, there go I? So, in our lives, as we know we live in these last days and it's the last generation, I think we need to consider changing our lifestyle and our perspective, changing our focus to maybe set aside those things that aren't really useful anymore and pursue those things that are. Maybe we should go after making the end of our life better than the beginning. You know, I know a lot of people have recently been talking about Michael Jackson or Whitney Houston or even people that have fallen from grace or fallen from some pedestal they were on like Tiger Woods or they lifted up somebody like Tim Tebow and while they were great, Tebow being a man of prayer, you know, was great in that respect. You know, they wanted the miracles to follow. They wanted all these other things to accompany. You know, I think we get the wrong perspective when we look at people. We need to kind of look at ourselves and say, hey, you know, I don't want the end of my life to be looking back on it and say what I either accomplished or didn't, but I want the end of my life to be like the race that I'm running with the last gasp that I have and I stumble over the finish line say, yeah, and Jesus standing there and hugging me saying, you won, you won, you claim the victory, it has been done, you win. Isn't that what you want? I mean. I don't want to look back and say, that was the best years of my life. I want to look forward and say, wait till you see what I'm going to do. Ha, huh, man, me and Jesus, we're on our way. So today, when you think about some of these memorials or requiems or, you know, kind of ways of looking back at what somebody has done, I would rather we look forward to what Jesus is coming to do. Because he's coming to set up a kingdom where we'll all rejoice together because we've exhorted one another, we've encouraged one another, we've helped each other to run the race that's been put before us. Let's not fall short of the glory of God as He has taken us this far. We know He's going to take us the rest of the way. Let's run. Let's give it all. Let's get it together and get going and put aside those things that just waste time move forward in that which we know is going to produce wonderful results for other people in their lives as well as who knows maybe God will commend us for what we've done in our own life near the goal in a race it is not the start that hurts 
not even the pace of the long stretch. It is when the goal is in sight, the heart and nerves and courage and muscles are strained almost to the breaking point, almost beyond endurance. So with you, now the goal is in sight. You need your final cry to me. Can you not see by the nerve and heart rack of the past few days that your race is nearly run? Courage. Have courage. Be courageous. As we know that new movie that's come out. Can you not see? Have you not heard? Heed my voice of encouragement. Remember that I am by your side, spurring you on to victory. In the angels of heaven, the saddest records are those that tell of the many who ran well and they started off like shooting stars and they went far and they rose high and they were way up in the sky with brave stout hearts until in sight of the goal of victory then their courage failed and they fell from where they had been, fallen from grace. The whole host of heaven longed to cry out how near the end was and to implore the last spurt but no, they fell out, never to know the last day of revealing how near they were to the victory. Would that they had listened to me in the silence as we know we ought to listen to him in his still small voice. Would they have heard me, they would have known that this is the day that I have made, that I am calling them home so soon and they would have known to pursue on but yet they turn back aside. There must be the listening ear as well as the still small voice to hear me as I speak to you. You know, I think about that. That's a good word for me. Maybe for you. I think about how God, if He is alive, wants to inspire us to move on in our life. Because I think of all these different people that say, Oh, well, Michael Jackson was making a comeback. Oh, well, Whitney was getting ready to do this concert. Oh, they were all getting ready. And I think of the parable that Jesus taught when he said that the wealthy man, the rich man, the farmer who had suddenly increased his barns and had been given a blessing from God, kind of like this house for me. So maybe this is a word for me. Listen carefully. I may be checking out. Yes! <laughs> just so you know how I feel about it yes, yes, let's go home but anyways Jesus told a parable about this rich young person that you know or farmer that said hey I've got barns, I've got my granaries I've got everything filled you know And what should I do? I'm so prosperous now I know what I'll do I'll build bigger barns, I'll build a bigger house I'll build a bigger church I'll have a mega ministry I'll get bigger and bigger and bigger and the master said to him, Thou fool, this night your soul will be required of you. In other words, what good does it do to have these plans for the future when today is the day that the Lord has made and he has chosen you to go with him all the way. So now as the noise comes close, and we'll try to cut this close to quit, let us move on and not try to create future plans for getting bigger and bigger and building bigger barns and holding more people or grain, let us rather do what we need to do to reconcile ourselves personally to God and have that intimacy that we always long for, that we know we should have as we run the race, to listen, to hear Him speak, and to walk in His way in a humble and contrite manner. Because we don't need to build bigger barns. No, we don't. We need to inspire more people to hear God speak. And then they can do what God wants them to do. So that we don't have these singular Tim Tebow's or these outrageous Whitney Houston's or Michael Jackson's or Elvis Presley's and we try to pick our star and say, oh, look at them, oh, look how far. But rather we see that each one of us, every single person in Jesus Christ is a superstar. They're a light shining in the darkness. They were designed by God specifically to be what He has chosen to be today. If <laughs> you harden not your heart. So listen. Walk away. Step back. Don't be so big. But take the time to listen to God today and see what He might say to you.